Praise God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord again today. I'm worshiping with all of you out there in media land. <laughs> uh, thank the Lord for this technology that we can go forward even when the COVID is still not lifted. But we just praise God because he is in charge and he makes a way out of no way. And we just welcome you this morning to come together with us and worship him. Even where you are, he is in the midst of all of us because he said we're two or three even gather in his name. He's in the midst. So we thank him for that today and we praise him. And we give him all the glory and all the praise because he deserves the glory and the honor. And we adore you, Lord Jesus. You are our King. You are our Lord. You are our Savior. We praise and worship you this morning. There's none like you, Almighty God. Almighty God, there's none like you. We thank you, Lord, that we can be in your presence, Lord, because we're a people of your presence. Lord, and that your Holy Spirit dwells within us, Lord, and that we're never alone, Lord, that you're always with us. And we give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to start with some praise and worship music this morning, and hope you join us in wherever you are. Oh, my God. 
the announcements. We're still working on putting together our virtual conference for the ladies. And our goal is the end of the month. And if we miss it, we'll let you know. <laughs> so we're still working on that. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's a first for us to put on a virtual conference. And a regular conference has a lot of pieces, but so does a virtual conference. And sometimes I think it might even be a little harder because we've never done it before. So, but we're working on that. And that's what we're, is upcoming for us. And um, we're looking forward to the day that we can open the front doors and welcome everyone back. So praise God and keep praying. Pray for our president who's coming into Sacramento, right? Tomorrow, yes. Tomorrow. yes. So pray for his protection. Um, they've already going to have people there that are coming against what he's doing. He's coming in to help us. So, um, where will he be at? Uh, so far as we know, he's coming in at McClellan Field. Yeah. That's about all I know. I don't know what we Is he's coming in at McClellan. Okay. So, um, we just pray for his protection yes. while he's, he's in California. He's coming three. to uh, assess the fire. Right. Because of the fires. So we have a couple of other um, prayer requests. We ask for prayer for Pastor Wanda, who's been under attack. Huh. She's right through this morning. I had pain in my foot this morning. Yeah. And while we were singing the praises. Oh, good. Praise, praise God. God. You know, the lying symptoms can't stand in the presence the of the Lord. Amen. We have us from Lois, who's uh, a friend so of a friend. And um, her son was behind the fire line. And when she found out, it caused her stress, which caused a heart attack, and she had to go to the hospital. So we're asking for prayer for Lois, for her heart um, issues that she had to go to the hospital for. Amen. Amen. Keep Jeremiah in prayer. And Jeremiah, who's recuperating from his surgery still, he still needs prayer. Yes. He, he uh, sent a praise report that the one blockage Oh, the one repair that they made in the heart is working now. Okay. Where it had not been working. So praise God. So he's had progress, but he's not on his way to recovery. On his way to recovery. So just continue to pray for Jeremiah. Okay, let's go to the Parsha. Rosh Hashanah is the beginning of the year. And that's, this is the Israelite year. And it's the week of September 13th to September 19th, 2020. The Torah is Genesis 21, the whole, gen the whole chapter apparently. Prophets is Jeremiah 31, 1 through 19, and Gospels, Matthew 24, 29 to 36, and Luke 1, 39 to 55. Ten reasons to blow the shofar. You know, we were singing, what, were, what was the first song? Blow the trumpets in Zion this morning, and I thought, you know, my shofar's at home. I could have brought it. I should have brought it. Yeah. Here's Ariana, but it's here. Yeah. I didn't think of that. So there are ten reasons to blow that shofar. The Torah commands us to hear the sound of the shofar blown on Rosh Hashanah. But what does the blowing of the trumpet symbolize? The festival of Rosh Hashanah arrives on the first day of the seventh month with a reminder by blowing of trumpets. When you read trumpet in the in the Bible, if you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, it will say shofar. I did a study on that. In the synagogue, the, we mark the occasion with 100 trumpet blasts on the ram's horn, or the shofar. The Torah commands the Jewish people to blow the shofar on Rosh Hashanah as a memorial, but it does not indicate what the blowing of the shofar memorializes. The sages offered various attempts to explain the festival. They searched through the scriptures for references to shofars and trumpet blasts and derived a plethora of different remembrances. The early medieval sage Rav Sa'adeya Gayam codified the various explanations along with traditional themes associated with the festival and produced a list of 10 primary remembrances for which the shofar is blown on Rosh Hashanah. 
Each of these remembrances highlights a unique aspect of the festival. One, the coronation of the king. Two, the call to repentance. Three, the giving of the Torah at Sinai. Four, warning of impending judgment. Five, the destruction and future rebuilding of the temple. Six, the binding of Isaac. Seven, fear of God. Eight, the day of judgment, which is Yom Kippur. Nine, the ingathering of Israel. And ten, the resurrection of the dead. Even as we wait to hear the trumpet blast of the king, the great shofar of our returning redeemer, we celebrate the appointed time of the Rosh Hashanah. The annual blast of the shofar during the Feast of, Tab of Trumpets foreshadows that day when the heavens will be rent by the blast of Messiah's trumpet. For disciples of the Messiah, Rosh Hashanah is a reminder technical difficulties. Lost it. There it is. It's a reminder of that appointed time yet to come when the Master will send forth his angels with a great trumpet. Amen. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds yes. from one end of the sky to the other. That's Matthew 24, 31 from the NASB. It's a day on which we anticipate the coming judgment. The trumpets of the book of Revelation and the beginning of the end. It's a glimpse of the future, a shadow cast through time. Amen. As such, the Feast of Trumpets is relevant for everyone who believes in Messiah's return. It is an important festival for the disciples of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah.
to you with a story of it from the Old Testament. And I named this sermon, If God Be For You. Praise God. We're going to go to Numbers 22 and 1, to Numbers 24 and 9. And I know it's a lot of scripture, but it's a story. So bear with me as we go through these things in Numbers. It's a story of Balaam and Balak against Israel. So let's see what happens in this wonderful story that happened in the Bible times. You know, in the first part of Numbers 22, it said, Then Benai Israel set out and camped in the plant, in the plans of plains of Moab alongside the Jordan, across from Jericho. When Balak, the son of Zippor, realized that all Benai Israel had done to the Amorites, and Moab became terrified. There were so many people. Moab was filled with dread because of Benai Israel. Moab said to the elders of Midian, the multitude were flicked up by everything around us like the ox flicks up the grass of the field. Now Bala, son of Zippor, was king of Moab at that time. And you know what was funny? When the Israelites left Egypt, they were afraid to what because they were in a land they hadn't been in and they didn't know what kind of people they'd be facing. But now that fear has turned from Israel to the Moabites and their kings and their princes. Watch this. He sent a messenger to summon Balaam, a son of Beor, at Pethor, near the river in his native land saying to him, look now, a people has come out of Egypt. See now, they cover the surface of the earth. That means they were a multitude. And they're settling beside me. Mm. He was a little bit afraid. That fear had shifted, hadn't it, from God's people to where it belonged. Come now, he said to Balaam. He said, come now, curse this people for me because they are too strong for me. Perhaps I may be able to defeat them and drive them away from the country. I know that wherever you bless will be blessed, and whoever you curse will be cursed. And the elders of Moab and Midian left with divination fees in their hand to pay the seer. When they came to Balaam, they took Balaam, Balaam, they told him Balaam's words. And he said to them, spend the night here. I will give you an answer, just as Adonai speaks to me. So the officials of Moab stayed with Balaam. God came to Balaam and he asked, who are these men with you? And Balaam said to God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, sent to find me. Ooh. See the people coming out of Egypt cover the surface of the land? Come up now and curse them for me. Perhaps I will be able to fight against them and drive them away. God said to Balaam, do not go with them. Do not curse them, for they are blessed. So Balaam got up in the morning and said to the officials of Balak, go back to your country, for Adonai has refused to let me go with you. So the Moabite officials got up, went back to Balaam, and said, Balaam refused to come with us. That's because he couldn't go without God's permission. He had to get the permission of God because he couldn't even be gotten, oh, we'll find out one more later. And Balaam, Again, sent another, more dignitaries, more numerous and honored, and honored than the ones before them. And they also came to Balaam and said to him, Thus says Balaam, son of Zippor, because remember, he was the king in that land. Please, let nothing keep you from coming to me. I will 
richly reward you, and everything you tell me I will do. Just come now and curse his people for me. But Balaam answered Balak's servants, even if Balak gave me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot cross beyond the mouth of Adonai, my God, to do anything small or great. That's one, the one thing we should all remember. Amen. We cannot go beyond the word of God. Amen. Because when God says it, it's the law. Amen. But now you may spend the night here too, that I may find out anything else Adonai may say to me. God came to Balaam by night and said to him, Since the men came to you to summon you, arise and go with them. However, I love that, however. <laughs> Stipulations here. We better pay attention. Only the word I tell you are you to do. So Balaam got up in the morning, saddling his donkey, and went with the Moabite princes. But the anger of God burned because he was going. And the angel of Adonai stood in the road to oppose him. And he was riding on his donkey. And two of his servants were with him. When the donkey, now notice this. Balaam didn't see it. He was a seer, you know. He was supposed to be in tune with the spiritual things. But he didn't see the angel of God, but his donkey did. <laughs> When the donkey saw the angel of Adonai standing in the road with his drawn sword in his hand, the donkey turned off the road and went into the field. So Balaam beat the donkey to get her back onto the road. Then the angel of Adonai stood in a narrow path between the two vineyards with a wall on this side and a wall on that side. And when the donkey saw the angel of Adonai, she pressed against the wall, crushing Balaam's foot against the wall. So Balaam continued to beat his daughter, beat her. The angel again moved. He stood in a narrow place where there was no room to turn right or left. And when the donkey saw the angel of Adonai, she lay down under Balaam. Balaam was very angry and beat the donkey with his staff. Then Adonai opened the donkey's mouth, and she said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have beaten me these three times? And Balaam said to the donkey, Because you were made a fool of me. If I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you now. And the donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your donkey, which you have ridden as always to this day? Have I ever been in the habit of doing this to you? No, he said. Then Adonai opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of Adonai standing in the road with his sword drawn in his hand. So he fell on his face. The angel of Adonai said to him, why have you beaten your donkey these three times? Behold, I came as an adversary because your way before me is a reckless one. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. If she had not turned away from me by now, you would have been killed. You indeed, but let her live. Balaam said to the angel of Adonai, I have sinned, for I did not know that you were standing in the road to open to oppose me. Now, if this is displeasing in your eyes, I will go back home. The angel of Adonai said to Balaam, Go with the man, but speak only the word that I tell you. So Balaam went with Balaam and his princes. When Balaam heard that Balaam had come, he went out to greet him at the Moabite city on the border of, the, of Arnon, the frontier of the territory. Balak said to Balaam, didn't I send you an urgent summons? Why didn't you come to me? Am I really unable to reward you? He said, look, I have come to you now. Balaam said to Balak, 
can I just say anything? I must speak only the message which God puts in my mouth. Then Balaam went with Balaam to Kirkenath, Hazel. Hazel. Balaam sacrificed cattle and sheep and sent some to Balaam and the princes who were with him. In the morning, Balaam took Balaam with him to Balaam Baal, and from there he saw part of the people. Then Balaam said to Balaam, Build me seven altars. The, the ritual begins now. He said, build for me seven altars here and prepare for me seven bulls and seven rams. So Balaam did just as Balaam had said. Balaam, Balaam and Balaam offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Balaam said to Balaam, stay here beside your offering and I will go. Perhaps Adam and I will meet me. Whatever message he shows me, I will tell you. Then he went to a barren height. High places. Mm. God met with Balaam and he said to him, I have prepared seven altars, and on each altar I offered a bull and a ram. Adam and I put a message into Balaam's mouth and said, return to Balaam and speak this. Hmm. Balaam went back to him. Behold, he was standing beside his offering with all the princes of Moab. Then he uttered his oracles and said, from Aram, Balaam brought me, Moab's king from the mountains of the east. Come, curse Jacob for me. Come, Denounce Israel. How can I curse one whom God has not cursed? How can I denounce one whom Adonai has not denounced? From the rocky peaks I see him. From the heights I behold him. Look, he lives as a nation apart and does not consider himself as being like the other nations. Who can count Jacob's dust? Who can number a fourth of Israel? Let my soul die in the death of the upright, and let, and let my uh, end be like his. Balak said to Balaam, What have you done to me? I brought you to curse my enemies, but look, you've actually blessed them. You know, God filled his mouth. God put that message in him. And when he spoke it out, it was God speaking. God bless. But in response, he said, Mustn't I speak whatever Adonai puts into my mouth? Then Balak said to him, Come now with me to another place where you can see a part of them only. Not all of them. Curse them for me just from there. And he took him to a lookout field on top of Pisgah. He built seven altars and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Stay here beside your offering, he said to Balak. While I am leading over there. Adonai met Balaam there and put a message into his mouth and said, Return to Balaam and speak thus. So he went to him, and behold, he and the princes of Moab were standing beside his offering. Balaam asked them, What did Adonai say? So he uttered his oracle and said, Rise, Balaam, hear me. Son of Zippor, God is not a man who lies or a son of man who changes his mind. Does he speak and then not do it or promise and not fulfill it? Look, I received a command to bless. He has blessed. I cannot change it. Amen. No misfortune is to be seen in Jacob and no misery in Israel. Adonai, their God, is with them. The king's shout is among them. God is bringing them from Egypt with the strong horns of the wild ox. God bless, God bless. There is no sorcery effective against Jacob, nor any demonition against Israel. Now it will be said of Jacob and Israel, see what God has done? The people rise like lionesses. 
like a lion who does not rest until he eats his prey and drinks his victim's blood. Then Balak said to Balaam, do, you, do not curse them or bless them at all then. Balaam answered and said to Balaam, haven't I told you all that Adonai says I must do? Amen, amen. Balaam said to Balaam, yes, come Lord. with me to another place. Perhaps it will be pleasing to God and you may curse them for me from there. So Balaam took Balaam to the top of Peor, overlooking the wasteland. And Balaam said to Balaam, build me seven altars here and prepare seven bulls and seven rams for me. And Balaam did just as Balaam said and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. When Balaam realized that it was pleasing in the eyes of Adonai to bless Israel, he did not resort to sorceries as the other times, but turned his face toward the wilderness. Lifting up his eyes, Balaam saw Israel dwelling by tribes. Yeah. Ooh, I can just see it in my mind's eye, the, the tent of blessing, the tent of God, and then all of the encampments there by tribe all around. Oh, it's so beautiful. Ah, so, the Ruach Elohim came over him. He uttered his oracle and said, This is the oracle of Balaam, son of Beor, and the oracle of a strong man whose eye has been opened. Amen. The oracle of one hearing God's speech and one Shaddai's vision, one fallen down yet with eyes open. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob, and your dwellings, O Israel. Like valleys they are spread out, like gardens beside a river, like, like uh, aloes planted by Adonai, like cedars beside the waters. Water will flow from his buckets, his seed by abundant water. His king will be greater than Agag, and his kingdom will be exalted. God is bringing him out of Egypt like the strong horns of a wild ox. He devours nations hostile to him. He will crush their bones. Amen. His arrows will pierce them. Amen. He crouches like a lion or lioness who would rouse him. He who blesses you will be blessed, and he who Amen. curses you will be cursed. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless God. Hallelujah. God speaks that even today. So they parted ways. They That's each went their own way. way. The and oh. we know that God will not be overcome by sorcerers or anything man can do. Amen. Cannot overcome God because God is the king of the universe. Hallelujah. And he reigns forever. And the same is true now. God raises up people rule and reign and God takes them down in his time and it's at his will and not our own mm -hmm. but God is in control and if we put our trust in him we can trust his very best for us because Jesus came Jesus came and he was the living word that dwelt and tabernacled with us from the time when God created the earth till now and forevermore God reigns. God is in control. And no matter what power would seem to come against him, no one is greater than our God. Mm -hmm. Greater is he that lives in you and me than he that's in the world. And all we have to do to have that great power is invite his Holy Spirit to be in our lives and to, to invite Jesus who died on the cross and shed his precious blood See, because Jesus was the Lamb of God. Jesus was the sacrifice that was to end all sacrifices because he was the one that was sent as Savior to the world. Even his name means salvation. So we honor Jesus today. And if you don't know him, 
Invite him into your life. Amen. All we have to do is say a simple prayer. Like, Father, forgive me for the sins that I've done. Lord, I know you sent your precious son, and he died on the cross for me. I believe he's your son, and I ask you to wash me whiter than snow. Yes. And Father, that you would send your son Jesus to abide with me, Amen. Through, and your spirit to lead and guide me all the days of my life. Amen. And Amen. Jesus will be there for you. Amen. He will be right where you need him, when you need him. Because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we're going to be having our conference regarding these three themes. And it's going to be a blessing. And I hope every one of you will, come, will join us in that virtual conference when we get it together. It's been, a, it's been a new experience for us. And so it's taking a little more time than we expected. But we know everything's in God's time anyway. Yep. And he is the ruler. And he has everything in control. And if you're going through illness or, or fear because of COVID, you don't have to be afraid because Jesus conquered the world. He overcame the world so we can. And the only way we can do it is with him at our side. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And he wants everything good for you. He says if you, being evil, Know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more, your Heavenly Father, do I know how to give good gifts to my children. Amen. And we're so thankful today that we can be a part of the family of God. Oh, well, thank God. Praise thank God. God. Yes. Amen. And thank you for being with us today. Uh, praise God. And I ask that uh, you keep your eyes on Jesus. And keep your hand on the wheel ahead, and we'll just keep pushing forward for him and build the kingdom of God and be obedient to him and his word. And we'll do, do as much as we can, as long as we can, and then we will hear him coming with a shout and with the sound of the trumpet. God bless, God bless. And we'll all be together for a long, 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 long time. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Father, thank you for your word today. I pray that you use it. Lord, your word never returns void. Amen. So I pray that you use these words that went forth today, God, to be a blessing, Lord, to make people have the comfort of the Holy Spirit all around them, Lord, and to have your new strength built it within them, Lord, yes, Lord, to go on another day. And Lord, one day it's so your word tells us that sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. And all we have to do is follow you one day at a time. Because you know the end from the beginning. We don't. And we can trust you. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. amen. So, and we can Behold the man of love the heart has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us, that we should be called.